Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're looking at this. It's the Ibanez AZES31 electric guitar. Now, this instrument is part of Ibanez's AZ Essentials range, and it's a more wallet friendly take on the brand's premium AZ, or AZ if you're in America, line of electric guitars. So, the AZES31 is definitely based on a Fender Stratocaster. You can see that in the double cutaway, you can see that in the three single coil pickups too. But this guitar has a few more tricks up its sleeve, and typical for Ibanez. It's been designed in a very cool way and has some very nice features included in it too that kind of seem to take it above its 300 euro or 300 dollar price tag. So what we're going to do in this video then is I will tell you about those specifications and those features. Then we're going to play the guitar and I will play it in as many different styles as I can just to demonstrate the versatility of this instrument. And afterwards I will give you a few more opinions on it, tell you how it is to play, how it feels and whether or not I think it's worth your money at the end of the day. What we're going to do first then is go through the specifications and the features of this instrument. So we start with the body then. The body is made of poplar and this particular example is finished in vintage white. A rather nice traditional looking bodywood colour there. Really, really classy looking for me. You can also get this model in vermilion, which is a bright red, more akin to Fender's Fiesta red, I would say. The scratch plate is off-white or mint green, however Ibanez are calling it. And here we have the three Ibanez essential single coil pickups. We also have an Ibanez branded bridge here, which is hardtail. Now normally for Stratocaster type instruments we would have a whammy bar there, a vibrato or a trem you might want to call it. This guitar doesn't have it and I think that's great because I don't think a lot of people who buy more affordable instruments really need to be playing around with whammy bars and they also often really affect your tuning stability in a negative way. So not having that option here, just having a hardtail bridge for me would be two thumbs up if I had my second hand free as well. Another cool feature I just want to show you on the side of the guitar here is the jack input here. This is often a problem again on more affordable instruments because you have it made of cheap metal parts and they just tend to break and you'll get loose circuits and then you'll have to take the guitar to a tech to get your guitar working again. On the AZES guitars we actually have a solid one piece plastic jack in put there and that feels really solid, it feels really good and I feel like that's actually a big plus point over other guitars at this price point. Moving back to the pickups then, three single coil pickups, a five way selector switch as you would expect on a Fender Stratocaster type guitar, a master volume control, a master tone control and a switch known as the altar switch. So let me tell you what options you have with these pickups. With a standard Stratocaster style guitar you'd have here in the first position the neck pickup active, in the second you'd have the neck and the middle pickup, in the third, you'd just have the middle pickup. In the fourth, you'd have the middle pickup and the bridge pickup on together. And in the fifth, you'd have just the bridge pickup on its own. But Ibanez have given us an altar switch here, which gives us a few more options. So if I flick back to the neck pickup as normal and I turn the altar switch to on, that will actually activate these two pickups here together, but in series. And what that will do is give me a thicker, more humbucker-esque tone. In the second position, there's no altar switch option there, so it's just these two pickups together as standard. But in the third position, in standard, I would just have the middle pickup on its own, but if I flick on the altar switch, I then switch to the neck and bridge pickups together. So that's a really unique and different sound, which has been used by a few players like David Gilmore, I believe, over the years, to pretty cool effect. Flick it to the fourth position here, and we have the middle and bridge pickups just as standard. And if I go to the bridge pickup, in standard, it's just the bridge, that glassy, bitey top end of a Stratocaster style bridge pickup. Flick on the altar switch though, and I will have the middle and the bridge connected together, but in series again. So it almost sounds like a thicker bridge humbucking pickup. So that's the pickups, that's the electrics. We should have a wide variety of sounds there and that's what we're gonna test out in a minute. But let me tell you about the neck first. So the neck on the AZES31 is maple. It's a satin maple neck finish as you can see here. It feels really slinky, really easy to get up and down. And it's a nice profile too. Not too thin in the hand, not too thick. A slightly chunky take on a modern C neck shape in my opinion. It feels really, really nice. Now the fingerboard has 22 medium frets and it looks like a nice dark rosewood but it's actually Jatoba. I always go on the record in my videos as saying I would prefer rosewood for my fretboards and I'll say that again but so far just from the looks I'm quite impressed with this Jatoba. It looks rather nice. Here we have a generic plastic nut. We have the Ibanez headstock here and it's actually poly finished on the front so it really pops. It looks really really nice and on the back we have six in line 
Ibanez branded tuners. So that's the AZES31 in terms of specifications then. And what we're going to do now is play the guitar. Now Stratocaster style instruments are often seen as being great for blues and classic stuff and pop and a bit of rock. But what I really want to do is put it through its paces in as many genres and varieties of tones as I can and as I always like to do on my channel. So what we're going to do then is we will use my Hughes & Kettner Black Spirit 200 amp today. We'll start on the amps clean channel. We'll play a bit of folk, a bit of pop, a bit of indie, maybe a bit of blues and some other stuff just to get the versatility of the pickups out there. Then I will switch on my Gria Lightspeed Organic Overdrive for a bit of light crunch to do some indie and some classic rock. After that, we'll go to my amp's lead channel for a bit more high gain rock and overdrive sounds. We'll do some hard rock, we'll do some progressive rock, we'll do some punk and some punk rock and a little bit more, I think. And after that, we'll revert back to my amp's clean channel and I'll integrate my Rev G3 distortion pedal. We'll tune the guitar down to drop D and see if it can do some metal and some chugging sounds. Enough talk then, this is the Ibanez AZES31. Let's play it now and we'll speak in more detail about it afterwards.
Okay then, so that was the Ibanez AZES31, and I hope you enjoyed the playing and the tones. And there certainly were an awful lot of different tones to be had in this video. With these three pickups and with this altar switch, there are so many different musical directions you can go in with this guitar, it's almost silly. And in fact, if you're someone who's looking out at the moment for a 300 euro or dollar-ish guitar that is Strat style and can cover as much musical ground as possible, then definitely have this one on your shortlist of instruments to try. But anyway, what I'm going to do now 
is tell you in a bit more detail what I think of the guitar, having had it at home for a week and played it every day for quite a long time because I'm really, really enjoying it. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that I actually got to preview this guitar before. I was at Henning Pauli's 42 Gear Street 3 back in summer 2021, and I got to basically discover this guitar and its brother from the range live with my friend and fellow YouTuber Lee Fuge. Check him out, links in the description. And we really liked these guitars. We got to discover them pretty much live, but we thought they were great and they had a lot of promise. Now, what I really then wanted to do was to get one at home, to discover it with my own rig, to have the comfort of my own house, my own time, to really get the ins and outs of this guitar and really see what it was like not having an Ibanez rep in the same room as well. And that's what I'm doing now. So the first impressions when I got this guitar at the box were very, very good indeed. It does that typical Ibanez thing, even being a budget guitar, that it looks like it's been perfectly made. You can't obviously see any flaws in the fit and finish. It felt good. The weight of this guitar is really good. Now we've got a poplar body and a maple neck, so you wouldn't expect it to be super heavy. But this specific guitar weighs 3.15 kilograms. That's just under under seven pounds, so a very nice weight indeed. It balances very well too, so whether you're playing sat down or standing up with a strap, it's very, very good for that as well. So I was really impressed and I couldn't wait to get the guitar plugged in to hear how it sounded. But let me tell you also a little bit about my thoughts on the build quality of the guitar. As I just alluded to, it's a thing with Ibanez, at least in my experience, that they always seem to be made really, really well. And again, there don't seem to be any flaws visible on this guitar at first look. The one thing I have managed to spot is that at the neck heel here, we do have maybe a couple of tiny finish imperfections there. But at 300 euro guitar price point, that's the kind of thing that you might expect. Everything else is totally fine. The guitar was set up basically perfectly straight out of the box. Now the nut here seems to have been cut well. The action and the intonation are totally fine. The guitar is very slinky and easy to play. The frets seem to have been done very well as well, so no problems whatsoever there. The pots and knobs and switches all seem to do their jobs very well. This plastic jack switch here, I've given it some heavy duty in and out usage over the last week, every time I've played, and it seems to be absolutely fine. It feels really solid. It's really thick plastic. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break anytime soon. And another highlight for me, the hardtail bridge. Now this is an Ibanez branded or no-name generic bridge if you want, but it's really comfortable. It's got these rolled steel saddles here. It feels really smooth and easy to play. It's an absolute joy for me. I'm someone who hasn't played strats that much in his musical career to date. I do have another strat, but I don't even have the whammy, the trem bar in. I actually play it like a hardtail strat, and this guitar for me is absolutely perfect in that regard. The rest of the body is absolutely totally fine, no problems whatsoever, and the neck too. The tuners seem to hold tune pretty well. This guitar straight out of the box seems to have been a joy to play and it seems to have been built as well as it could be at the price point. And the build quality of course relates to the playability of the instrument as well. Now because this guitar has been put together and the neck has been set up well it's all good. And this profile, this maple neck, this satin finish for me, it's a joy to play. I feel really at home on it. I love the profile of the neck. I have no problems even with the Jatoba fingerboard, you know. Like I said, I would prefer rosewood if I can get it. But this looks and feels like rosewood. It's really, really good. And in 2022, you couldn't really expect to have rosewood at this price point anyway. In terms of the rest of the playability, the body shape is really good. You know, the Stratocaster is a, a perfect design for standing or sitting with a guitar. You've got the cutaways here that make it easy. You've got a nice heel joint here for good upper fret access. It's a really, really easy guitar to play. And again, perfectly designed for people like beginners or students, people who really need an easy to play instrument to begin or to continue their journey as a six stringer. So how good does the AZES 31 actually sound then? Well, you've heard the playing samples already, so give me your comments down there. But in my opinion, this guitar sounds great and it's really, really versatile to boot. I've been super surprised at how good these Ibanez Essentials pickups actually sound as well. They're nice and fat, thick and juicy. They give you all all those great strat tones and more. Now of course you can't expect Fender Custom Shop tones at this price point but they really really do a good job and they do a good job of doing almost anything. Once we got up to the really high gain stuff and tuned down to drop D you could hear that this guitar is probably not in its natural environment but it did it. It managed it and it sounded not too bad. So this is a guitar that really can do pretty much everything. But when we started on the clean channel, I used the neck pickup to get some smoky, warm, bluesy tones, and I thought that sounded really nice. We got some mellow strumming tones, some almost acoustic sounds, and we got some twangy country tones, courtesy of the bridge pickup in the true single coil mode. Now, Strat 
bridge pickups are often very glassy, they're often very bitey with lots of top end. They can take your head off is what a lot of people say. So I did have the tone control rolled quite far down for a lot of the sound samples in this video. And for most of the classic rock tones too, I think I had the tone control on about three out of 10. So really rolled down quite a lot, but that's what this tone control lets you do. And I did do a playing sample where you hear me rolling off the tone control just to give you the full extent of that control. But when we went up to crunchy tones with the Greer Lightspeed again, this guitar sounded fantastic. That bridge pickup for those with the tone control rolled back a bit sounded fantastic for indie. It sounded great for classic rock as well. I just really liked it. It had a thick, nice, punchy tone to it, not humbucker tone, a great clarity. I really, really enjoyed those sounds. And when we went to the lead channel of the amp as well, I was expecting this guitar to start maybe sounding a little bit weedy and a little bit thin, but in my opinion, it didn't. It still sounded thick. It sounded really nice. I was on the bridge single coil for most of those playing samples, but it just did the job. I really liked it. One thing I didn't quite like so much, like I mentioned previously, was when I switched on the altar switch and had what was effectively almost a bridge humbucker. That sounded a bit boomy. It didn't have the character of the tone that I would really want. You can hear that in a couple of the samples and see what you think. But for me, single coil tones for the high gain stuff are where it's at with this guitar. And again, once we got up to the metal stuff, we weren't on home turf for this guitar, but it really did the best it could. And I really think that if you had this guitar and wanted to do a bit of metal with it, you absolutely absolutely could. So full marks for the price point, this guitar sounds fantastic. I'm really, really impressed. So if you're really liking this guitar so far, but you want to try out some of the competition just to see what might be the best value for money, what else should you consider? Well, for me, there's a couple of different main options. The first one would be Squire, of course. You can get Squire Classic Vibe Stratocasters, which cost a little bit more than this guitar and have a much more vintage feel. So you'll probably have a poly finished neck. It'll probably be a thicker neck as well, and it'll be a more vintage tonality. Check that out if you get the chance, because that may or may not be more of your thing. And if you've got a little bit less money to spend, you can go down in budget to the Squire Affinity models or all the way down to the Squire Bullet models of guitar. Now, the other guitar which might be on your radar for this kind of double cutaway Strat style instrument is the Yamaha Pacifica. Now, Yamaha Pacificas are excellent starter guitars. They're really, really good. They're just solidly built instruments. They're not really particularly exciting or anything, but they do this job and they do it very well as well. Of course, those guitars will feel slightly different to the Ibanez. There are very many different models of the Pacifica 2, so go and check some of those out as well. But for me personally, if I was going between the three of the models, it would be really hard for another guitar to convince me that it's better than this specific one, because I really like this instrument. And so that's probably a very good conclusion for this video, actually. I'm really, really enjoying the AZ ES31, and I think it's a wonderful alternative to a Squire Strat or a Yamaha Pacifica, or indeed any other kind of $300, €300 Strat style of instrument. I love the way this one looks. It's really good to play. It feels great and it sounds fantastic too. It's got a bunch of clever features. You've got the hardtail bridge and this plastic jack input there. You've got the altar switch and loads of different tonal versatility. I can't really say a bad word about this guitar for the price point. It's really, really nice. And I'm going to have a hard job giving it back if Ibanez wants it back when I'm done with the video. Now, if you're someone taking your first steps into the guitar world, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. Test out the options if you can. See which works best for you. But for me, this is a really, really good choice. And again, even if you're not a new player, if you have other guitars and have never had a Strat and want to take your first dip into the waters of Stratum, this is a very, very good guitar to do that with. It's just very, very forgiving, really nice and easy to play, and a really, really good all-round choice. I hope you've enjoyed this video then. I hope it answered all your questions about the AZES31. Let me know in the comments if you have any other thoughts about it, or if you want to tell me what you think, or if you've got any questions, and I shall try and answer them to the best of my ability. And if you haven't subscribed, to the Rich Words Music channel yet, I would love it if you could drop the video a like and give me a subscription too, because it really does help the channel grow a little bit more and help me build the Rich Words Music community a little bit. But right about now, there's a couple of cool other videos that you can watch about here and here. You can subscribe to me as well just by clicking that thing there too. But that's been it for today's video. I've been Rich for Rich Words Music, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.